43 litres of boom, 349 brake horsepower, capable of lifting up to 55 tonnes of steel. Welcome to the world of mighty mobile cranes. These powerful machines make modern day living so much easier. They could be used in fixing essential broken down machinery, dismantling a dangerous tree, or even something as simple as putting your hot tub in your back garden. These are the massive machines that lift Britain. Being a crane driver can be a demanding job. Due to the unpredictable nature of the type of work the crane may need to do, the drivers are on standby 24-7 in case an emergency job comes through. Today, Jeff is taking his Grove 3055, a monster capable of lifting to 55 tonnes on a 55 mile journey to Wimbledon. Due to his top speed only being 50 miles per hour and being required on site at 6 a.m., he has to leave the depot just after 3 in the morning. Jeff arrives on site at 10 to 6 in the morning. He greets the site manager and then they proceed with the plan of action. Jeff will be working with Tony, an AP who will sling the load on the crane. Today's load is a huge refrigerator, almost 40 feet in length and weighing at 10.1 tonnes. The team must unload the delivery lorry and fit the unit in a narrow gap next to the factory. Well, we're going to get all the straps on. Uh, Jeff's going to take the weight. Hopefully, we're going to slew it in this way and put it down that way so the door's facing that way for him. It's proving challenging. The gap between the factory and the neighboring fence is very narrow. Eventually, they get it down. However, there is a problem with the way the load is sitting on the hook. At the moment, the cabin's sitting like that. So if we put extra shackles in this end, we should bring it level. And then we'll be able to get it in properly. At the moment, it's just digging in like that. With extra shackles in place, the load sits level and the men are able to judge the positioning of the fridge with better accuracy. A final packing of the load at one end ensures the fridge will rest level once back on the ground. A job well done. All that's left to do is derig the crane and sign the paperwork. Back at head office, calls flow in from across the south, right, requesting so heavy lifters for their sites. Well, first one in the crane, I went to left school in Australia, and done it for three years, and then went and done a few other things, and then when I moved to England, I knew someone that was in the crane art business, and then got a job. I answer the phones, take in jobs, do site visit forms, order things for the cranes. If there's a breakdown, sort that out. I do go driving cranes if it's required, if someone's ill, off, or yeah, they need to leave early, I go and cover for them. There are two type of lifts we provide. One's a CPA lift and the other one's a contract lift. Uh, with contract lift hire, we go do the site visit and do all the paperwork, have a slinger banksman involved in the lift. Um, 
so we control it from start to finish. With the CPA, the person just rings up, hires a crane, and they are meant by law to provide all that, all the paperwork, so it goes okay when the driver turns up. Martin is working with John and Jeff. They are helping to put up prefabricated chimneys in position on the roof of a new care home facility in Tunbridge. He is using a highly specialised type of crane, known broadly as a city crane. This particular machine is a brand new Kato CR200. The benefits of using this type of equipment is that it's far more compact and having a shorter wheelbase with all-wheel steer means its turning circle is just over 4.5 metres. With a boom length of 28 metres and a maximum lifting capacity of 20 tonnes, this machine has earned its nickname perfect for working in the tight conditions of a city like London. Jeff slings the chimneys using lifting eyes and clips the shackles in place. He expertly guides a blind Martin on the ground through the use of radios to coordinate the lift. Martin won't be doing all the heavy lifting though. The crane will be used to put the first two chimneys into position on the side of the building and then he'll load the last three chimneys onto John's high ab. This is necessary as the lorry will move the chimneys onto the road area where it will set up for the next part of the job. Um, we're working off a public highway, we can use outriggers, um, so hence the IAB plan. Obviously the crane we're using inside because we're trying to minimise the length of time we're out on the, on the road. Um, that's the reason really. We're using the smaller crane obviously because um, we've just laid the paviors, let, we need to let them settle, we don't want to be doing any damage at this stage of the job. Uh, we're handing the job over on Monday, so um, just minimise damage really. Pedestrian barriers are placed around the footpaths near the higher to help ensure the safety of the members of the public. Once the outriggers are lowered, the higher arm is unfolded to begin craning the remaining chimneys into position. Articulated higher arms are not the same as cranes. They have a fixed lifting point on the jib of the arm. A crane has the ability to move its jib over a load and then hoist its rope up or down. A high ab cannot do this. The high ab arm has to bend into exactly the right position in order to pick up or place a load. However, unlike a crane, the high ab has the benefit of being completely remote controlled. This allows the operator a more complete vision of the work he is doing. With some careful control from John the operator and some muscle power from the contractors, the chimneys are safely secured into place. Sometimes, cranes are needed to help dismantle trees that are endangering people and properties. Malcolm is working with down-to-earth trees at an old rectory in Surrey. They plan to cut down an old ash tree 
has become a danger to those around it. Tree felling is notoriously difficult for cranes because once the surgeon has cut off a branch, the crane will have taken the weight of it. The problem with this is that there is no way they can be sure of the weight. If the surgeon cuts off too much, the crane could flip over, causing hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of damage. Things are going smoothly, and now they must move the fallen limbs into a separate part of the garden. However, this is easier said than done. Other trees block the path of the hook and threaten to tangle it, potentially pulling the rope completely off its runners. With the limbs successfully felled, the final operation is to remove the giant trunk, which weighs close to eight tons on its own. The trunk is successfully lifted and left for the tree surgeons to break down. Another job complete. It's time to head back to the depot. So there you have it, a small insight into a world of dizzy heights and extreme machines. Another fine job by the 18.